With the incredible discoveries of scientists like Albert Einstein and Edwin Hubble, the deepest secrets of the universe seemed almost within reach. Today, with the help of advanced computers, we can model whole galaxies right in the laboratory. Current research in astrophysics, far from answering all of our questions, continues to reveal a cosmos more wonderful and mysterious than ever. Hello and welcome to Matter and Beyond. I'm your host, Laura Wells. On this episode, we'll share the remarkable story of Pete Hutt, a professor at Princeton University's renowned Institute for Advanced Studies. Whether it's tracking comets or exploring the dimensions of human consciousness, Dr. Hutt is continually working to expand the frontiers of understanding. Astrophysicist Dr. Pete Hutt is a scientist who envisions new ways to understand science and to be aware of the reality of the universe. His dream starts as a small child growing up in Holland, a dream that fits into the reality that he knows. My earliest memory is uh, when I was three years old, then I wanted to become a garbage truck driver. But soon I changed to uh, wanting to become a train driver, since the train was even bigger and more spectacular than a garbage truck uh, around the corner. As the young boy grows, so does his imagination and the size of his dreams from driving a truck, and then a train, to piloting a ship through space. From a train I scaled up to wanting to become an astronaut and wanting to fly in a spaceship. <laughs> and that was just around the time that the first few uh, uh, people went into uh, orbit. Uh, I was born in 1952, so at the beginning of elementary school it was just the time of Sputnik and uh, Gagarin and Glenn and all that. Realizing his interest, Dr. Hutt now works at the Institute for Advanced Studies at Princeton University, researching areas not previously investigated by the scientific community. The Institute is a marvelous place uh, for doing research, especially the type of research uh, where you don't know beforehand even the direction you want to go in. Uh, most research these days is very uh, well defined. You apply for a grant and you have to do something very specific. But the Institute for Advanced Study is one of the few places where you really are completely free to go in any new direction you want. One of the directions that Pete took was the study of asteroids, a study that will certainly be very important one day. The asteroids uh, are in orbits which cross the orbit of the Earth, but there is so much space that at any given day or any given century there is very little chance that they will hit the Earth. But the Earth is moving around the Sun, and all the asteroids are moving around the Sun, so sooner or later we're going to have an accident. For scientists, it is a certainty that an asteroid will strike the planet as they have in the past. Only the size of the asteroid and the timing of the impact is uncertain. And it's, uh, it may be a few years, it may be a few thousand years, but we are going to have other asteroid impacts and someday we're going to have a very big one, but that may be a million years from now. It may happen to today or tomorrow. We don't know. In the movie Armageddon, the solution to such an encounter with an incoming asteroid was to blow it up. As usual, Hollywood's solution is not the safest one. That would be very dangerous because if you blow up an asteroid, you'll get many smaller pieces and each of those can do a lot of damage, so in a way you can make the damage worse by spreading it. Dr. Hutt believes the solution to avoiding a catastrophic impact from an asteroid lies in a gentler approach. He was inspired by a new type of motor called a plasma engine, which is being developed by NASA in Houston. So it is much better to push it out of the way very gently rather than blowing it up. So that is what we are trying to do. Well, the B612 concept uh, started here uh, behind us when uh, the astronaut Ed Lou and I were walking here around the pond and in about 10 minutes we had the basic uh, concept. His achievements in astrophysics resulted in a quite unusual honor. In December 2004, a major asteroid belt was named after him. Oh, it is nice to have an, uh, an celestial body named after me. It was one of the 20,000 or so asteroids that have names, so it is not that special, but it's still nice. <laughs> but unfortunately, it will never come close to the Earth. It is in an orbit between Mars and Jupiter. Dr. Hutt believes that conversational simulations are absolutely essential in astronomy. 
by developing and discussing a series of questions called what-if scenarios, astronomers can address potential problem areas that may be millions of miles or light years away in the physical sense. However, astronomy and astrophysics had an inherent disadvantage in investigating the nature of certain phenomena. It is a funny thing because astronomy is the oldest science and natural science started with astronomy in the days of Galileo and Kepler and Newton. The phenomenon of the abstract principles in the motions of the heavenly bodies preoccupied the Greeks and before them the Babylonians. And independently, half a world away, the Mayans were making precise observations of the celestial bodies as well. Unlike chemistry and unlike biology and physics itself, uh, astronomers don't have a laboratory. Uh, chemists can do laboratory experiments and physicists can and biologists can, but astronomers always have to use a telescope and cannot change the stars themselves. But uh, in the last half century, with the invention of computers, finally astronomers got their laboratory. Not in the physical sense. But now, a kind of laboratory for astronomers does exist in a virtual sense. With the advance of technology and with the imagination of the human mind, today, rigorous study of the motions of heavenly bodies is possible. As an astrophysicist, Pete Hutt explores the universe in the largest scales of time and space. His interests, however, don't stop there. In the next half of the program, we'll find out what Dr. Hutt has learned about the many ways of knowing, be they subjective or objective, scientific or spiritual. We'll also see what can be gained when different points of view come together. It has only been over the past four centuries that science has truly come into its own. Men such as Galileo, Descartes and Newton contributed to the development of the empirical process where experiments yield suggestions for the building of new theories in science that we now have understood the basic rules of all the matter around us and all the energy around us. There are still some questions left on the very small microscopic structure, much more smaller, much smaller than microscopic really, on the very smallest subatomic structure. We still don't know uh, how the rules really are, but for everyday life, the rules of chemistry, the rules which influence the colors we see around us, the material properties, all of that atomic and molecular physics can be understood with the laws we have. So on that level we have been, been extremely successful. A distinction made between what appears to be and what really is. In terms of achieving the reality of existence, Dr. Hutt sees many parallels between scientific inquiry and religious quest. Uh, the surprise is that the world is different from what it looks like. We look around us and it seems that we know the world. Uh, we see grass, trees, people, clouds. Uh, we see matter, energy, radiation. We can measure everything. And we have the feeling that everything could be understood. But science tells us immediately that things are very different than we think they are. Looking at water, one sees only a fluid. Looking at rocks, one sees only a solid. But atomic theory reveals that they are composed of atoms which cannot be understood simply by looking at the phenomena themselves. So behind the phenomena there is a whole different world which you cannot see with your eyes or ears or whatever. And I would say uh, my interest in spirituality is uh, very similar. Uh, what more can there be behind the phenomena? Where do the phenomena come from? Is there a different way in which we can look at the totality of, of what we experience? And uh, in that sense, I would say there is more of a parallel between science and spirituality. One of the parallels is apparent in the study of the subject. For the past few hundred years, the process of theories and experiments has influenced each other in the study of the object. However, for every observation there is an object, a subject, and the interaction between them. And my guess would be, in the next few hundred years, science will also focus on the interaction and on the subject. And not because of a new fashion or a new idea, but I think science will be forced to do that.